So we're just at the end of the first week of Mythic Plus being open and Blizzard have just posted their first round of tuning which will be going live a couple hours from now. This is pretty exciting because uh, I don't know what's happened, what the can't point to a single change from the past couple of weeks or months, but it really feels like Blizzard are listening now more than they probably ever have. And they're really hitting some home runs at the moment. It feels like a lot of these changes posted today are the major pain points people have been talking about from week one. Once these if change is going to affect and we can start playing around next week. I'm sure there'll be a couple of things that still are kind of sticking out as um, improperly tuned mechanics, but I would say that these changes are going to address 90, 95% of them, at least for now. So we'll see how we go in the future. First up, we have Algathar Academy. The skitterflies that patrol around their tree boss, they have a kind of leap or charge mechanic. They'll, they'll target a random player, charge to them, inflict a sting poison debuff that does damage over time. This is being reduced by 25% and at the moment it feels like if you get charged once you're going to get charged by all three and it looks like this is being changed so that they now properly target random people so that's great and the arcane missiles effect on the spectral invokers which are these guys up here the trash before the last boss is being buffed. All that really means, at least to me, is that um, we're actually going to worry about kicking those casts now, which seems fine. But from my experience this week, most of this trash is either skipped or easily killed because of the debuff that this trash puts out. So these same Spectral Invokers will cast Astral Bomb on a player. It's like a, a delayed AoE damaging debuff that goes out. Now this actually also affects the trash itself which means that uh, with a fair few groups that pull that kill this trash on the stairs together and then pull all of the remaining trash into the final boss kind of room around the corner and then blow it all up if you have the people that get the astral bomb on them run into the trash mobs you end up doing quite a lot of damage and this trash dies pretty easy so that that arcane missiles buff doesn't seem too bad at all and the overgrown ancient from the tree boss has had its health reduced by 40%. This is a great change. I guess it, it'll, we'll see if it's enough. Uh, the way the boss works is that he'll cast germinate, which spawns uh, multiple little AOEs under everyone in the party. So you want everyone to stack up on the tank as this goes out, because those little debuff, the ground AOE effect things become adds. And the kind of trap for this boss is that as the first germinate goes out and the adds spawn, a lot of DPS will press all their cooldowns to blow those adds up. That's bait. The first germinate adds don't come out of the ground, I believe until the second germinate goes off. So what you actually want to do is just group up for the, so the first set of adds are all together and you just want to hit the boss, pump all your damage into the boss and passively cleave those adds down. They're not a priority. The second germinate, however, does the same thing, but then the adds that are in the ground will pop out of the ground and start hitting the tank. The second germinate also spawns this uh, ancient branch, which is like the, the mini boss ad that you need to interrupt and kill. Now, when this ad dies, he drops an AOE on the ground that removes the dot debuff that the boss puts on players. So everyone wants to be in that AOE to have that dot cleansed. And reducing the health on this ad just means that that can happen quicker. The big thing here that you want, I guess we want to see that this change allows, is that if this ancient branch can die fast enough, then the group can clear the debuff or the dot damage before the germinate adds come out of the ground and start wrecking the tank. We'll have to see, uh, next week's going to be interesting with Bursting and Grievous. And tyrannical but we'll have to see if this changes enough i'm optimistic i think this boss once the mechanics are done well and the tank really knows what they're doing and when to press cooldowns and things and the, the dps uh johnny on the spot with being able to kill the priority adds then this boss becomes a lot more manageable uh, in the azor vaults the conjured lashes have their health reduced which is just these guys at the start of the dungeon the packs of three that spam the debuff that you need to kick. And the Arcane Tenders infused ground damage has been reduced by 33%, which is quite a lot. That's these big tree guys around the first boss and in the first corridor. They target a random player with Arcane Missiles, I think. And then those missiles, like they drop the 
round effect under that player. They have to move very quickly to not take damage from that. The big change is to the Azua Blade boss. And that is that overwhelming energy is being, the damage on that is being reduced by 25%. That's the ability that forces everyone out of melee range and spawns the orbs that radiate or emanate from the boss repeatedly. There's going to be less orbs because the cast time is going from 2 seconds to 3 seconds. And there's now a delay for when this mechanic happens, which gives a little bit more time for melee to get out of the way, which is good. The Ancient Orb damage has been reduced by 25%, not really important in high keys, you don't want to get hit by this ever anyway. But this is an excellent change for, at least for healers that require some melee range mechanics like Mistweavers, Holy Paladins. So that's going to make healing that boss much more manageable for those guys, which is great. In Court of Stars, it's just a graphical change to make the Legion Hounds Spellblaze puddle, the green degen puddle, they like leap to a, a player and drop a little pool on the ground, you just run out of it. That's getting a screen effect to go with it to remind people to get out of it, No, not a big deal there. In Halls of Valor, the wolves around the wolf boss have had their leap for the throat damage reduced by 20%. This is good, this ability is still going to absolutely destroy tanks. Uh, same with the Ferocious Bite ability, even in a 10 or 11 or 12 or something this week. I know it's fortified, but I've already seen those wolves hit Ferocious Bites on tanks for like north of 100k non-crit. So it would have been nice to see that ability damage get toned down a little as well. But the Leap for the Throat damage reduction is also really good. It's going to mean that tanks who run into the wolf packs don't immediately blow up, or at least don't blow up as quickly as... <laughs> some of us have seen this week. And Fenrir, so the wolf boss, he's had this mechanic since Legion for the whole time he's been in the game. So every, what feels like about 10 to 15 seconds, he'll do a effectively a 360 degree AOE thrash around him. And this will one shot the tank because it is, it is a huge damage hit and it's split amongst everyone it hits. So if, like I said, if it's only the tank in range, he'll get one shot. If it's a tank and one melee, the melee will routinely get one shot. So you need the whole group to be stacked in for this. It doesn't have a visual at all at the moment. So a lot of healers might be healing this boss and wondering like what the hell's happening? Why are people just auto almost dying all the time? This is what that mechanic is. So what's happening is that the damage of it and everything isn't changing, but it's now getting a big red thrash effect around it. So people know what's happening. And uh, the big offender from this week, or well, the two big offenders from this week, are getting pretty substantial nerfs. So not good offensive and Ruby Life Balls. In the not good offensive, the Soul Harvester's Death Bolt Volley is going to be cast less frequently and its cast time has been doubled. This is excellent. At the moment, there aren't enough kicks, at least from any group that I've been in, <laughs> to get all of these casts stopped. So hopefully this change will mean that this is much more manageable. If it gets to the point where like one DPS can stop all of the Death Bolt volleys on one of these Soul Harvesters permanently, this trash is going to get a lot easier to handle. The single target Death Bolt is also going from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds on the Corruptors, and the Necrotic Eruption is being cast less frequently. The big anti-melee mechanic on this trash, sorry, this is all of the trash leading up to the third boss. So this is all the trash over here on the burial mounds in Not Good Offensive. This Death Speaker's Chant of the Dead, this is the big green AoE effect on the ground. It's the big uh, middle finger to melee players. This is going to be cast less frequency frequently, which is great. And its cast time is being increased, I believe from six seconds to eight seconds. Not too bad. But this trash will remain the, uh, like drink a coffee, sit up in your chair, smash a Red Bull or something before you get there because you need your eyes on 15 different things for this trash. You're going to have to be looking at, at least for melee players, you're going to have to be looking at Chant of the Dead casts going off or finishing. This is uninterruptible, unstunnable, unstoppable in any way, you just need to be out of it. And then you're also going to be focusing on your kicks and your tank healing and the the spirit owls or the, the spirit animals on these burial mounds also do a kind of frontal AoE or a conal AoE that one shot. so you also need to be looking out for that. You're also trying to stun and stop the mortal strike events going off and think that this trash hopefully it won't be as crazy as it is now 
So these changes are great from that, but all of these mechanics will still be there. Hopefully they just won't be so clustered together. This Risen Mystic Swift Wind, this is the, the spirit animal cast I was just talking about. The cast time is being increased from two seconds to three seconds. Good change. Uh, Still have to be on your toes for this one because if you get hit by it, you die. The Risen Warriors Mortal Strike duration reduced from four seconds was 10 seconds. This is huge. This is also the ability that makes this trash seem very hit or miss. If you're playing with tanks like Prot Warriors that have the ability to parry the Mortal Strikes and generally don't take much damage to begin with, that then has to be healed back, then this trash might not feel as bad. But if you run this with like, well, tanks that rely on self-healing, and don't have an ability to parry or avoid a lot of these mortal strikes, this change is gonna be enormous. It's also gonna be cast less frequently again, which is just good. So hopefully maybe now it won't stack up to uh, two times as often. The Desecrated Mobs Rotting Wind range has been reduced from 40 yards to 25 and cast less frequently. Again, this is really nice for those range players that will now just be able to sit at max range and avoid a lot of these mechanics. So the, the knockout offensive, it's getting the most difficult trash in the dungeon is being nerfed heavily, which is great, and the most difficult boss in the dungeon is being nerfed. So that is the Raging Tempest. And that is this lightning guy over here. So the way this boss works, is that during the fight, these lightning orbs will spawn all around the boss and you effectively have your whole group spread out around the boss to pick up all of these orbs. You don't want any of the orbs hitting the boss because the orbs give a damage buff. So instead of giving the boss a damage buff, you collect the orbs to give yourself a damage and healing buff. So everyone spreads out around the boss, they collect all the orbs. Every time you collect the orbs, you take damage. And then the boss is going to cast this ability called Electrical Storm. The idea is that you collect the orbs, you build up your stacks, the boss casts the storm, and when the storm is going out, you have 50% increased damage and healing, so you can heal through the storm. The other change here is that Energy Surge is having its duration reduced to 8 seconds from 10. This seems, I mean, it's a good change, I guess, but it's pointless. Uh, this boss feels like it is mandatory to have a purge on. So what happens is the boss will cast Energy Surge, and then for 10 seconds or what will be eight seconds, every time it melees the tank, it will do a chunky lightning hit, which for most tanks isn't mitigated. So this, this is what destroys the tanks. This energy surge also gives the Raging Tempest 100% haste increase. So it melees twice as quickly and its melee attacks obliterate tanks, like four or five shot them if you're not healing them. So this energy surge not being dispelled or not having a purge for this is what makes healing this fight hard because you have to heal the tank a lot and you have to AOE heal the group a lot through Electrical Storm. If you purge this off quickly, then the tank healing becomes basically non-existent and you can focus primarily on your AOE healing your party. So I like the, I mean, the duration going to eight seconds is nice, but it still feels like in any high-ish key, if this isn't purged, the tank's dead. In Ruby Life Pools, the Scorchlings no longer cast Burning Touch. So the way it works at the moment is in the upstairs portion of Ruby Life Pools, the little adds will all do party-wide AOE damage and so do the big Blazehound, Blazebound Destroyers. This change to make the little guys not do the party-wide AOE is gonna make healing this whole upstairs area much easier. Uh, I'm very grateful that this change is coming through before Bursting Week because I couldn't imagine these little guys destroying your party and then when they die, they prop Bursting on your whole group and then destroy your party again. That would be a nightmare. So yeah, healing the, the little bits of trash between the four big pools of the Blazebound Destroyers upstairs is gonna make healing this much easier. Thunderhead and Flame Gullet are the two dragons. So what gets a lot of groups at the moment is that these guys fly around. They basically start flying their patrol routes once you fly up from the bottom to upstairs. So once you come up, uh, you'll see Thunderhead is here, right on the left. Any group that goes right here generally in my opinion runs into problems uh, some tanks think it doesn't matter which way you go the best reason to, to, to go left straight away and kill thunderhead as your first pull is that if he if you don't do that and he gets up and flies around halfway through one of these packs that you're fighting on the right hand side here your healer will get aggro from healing on thunderhead and he'll drop down and just you know welcome to the party 
while you're already finding a trash pack, which in a lot of cases are, is already a wipe. Same thing with the fire dragon. So even groups that go left, if they clear this left side and then a lot of tanks will like mount up and they'll beeline for this next destroyer pack and they'll go straight past the dragon because he's in the air. But then the healer will get aggro again and then he'll drop down and usually cause a wipe. So these two dragons are now going to be visible from much farther away, which makes their flight paths easy to keep track of, which hopefully means that this will become less of an issue. The cast time of Thunderhead Storm Breath and the Flame Breath on Flame Gallant is being increased from 3 seconds to 2 seconds. This is quite good. By the time this warning went off, if you weren't already in melee range with the ability to sidestep very quickly, you were probably going to get one shot by this breath at a 2 second cast. I found even on my Monk, uh, if I was you know, 15, 20 yards away or something for the group for whatever reason, or the dragon, and he would face in my direction and breathe. Even if I rolled instantly, I would still get clipped by the breath. So this increased cast time is just more time to move, which is great. So the Primalist Flame Dancer's Flame Dance channel duration is being increased to six seconds. This might not seem like much, but this is a pretty big and great change. So the way this works is that these Primalist Flame Dancers they will channel an ability that's unkickable, that will do damage to a player every second, I believe, for four seconds, and then at the end of the channel, everyone takes a big hit of damage. The way this is supposed to work is that you stun this. So you stop the channel, you stop the damage. The other way you can do it is that the Blazebound Destroyers will put the Living Flame debuff on a player, which is that red ring that shows up around you. And at the end of like, I think it's a two or three second duration or something, the ring explodes and you get knocked up into the air and take a bunch of damage. This knock up effect works on the trash as well. So the way you're supposed to play it is the person who gets the debuff is meant to run on top of the flame dancers and the knock up is meant to stop their channel. It generally happens that these two casts coincide or overlap with each other but it isn't always like good timing. So an increased duration on their channel means that there's more time to stop it before it ends and does the party-wide AOE, which is a nice change. The periodic damage on the living bomb is also being reduced, which is great. The Tempest Channeler's Lightning Storm periodic damage and duration have both been reduced by 20%. That is these channelers on the bridge towards the last boss. So there are two normal channelers, the Flame Channeler and the Tempest Channeler. They basically do the same thing, even though they have different names. You kill the little ads around them uh, and they do an uninterruptible, unkickable, unsubbable, whatever uh, channel, which just damages the whole party. It's the big lightning storm effect. Having the duration of that and the damage of that reduced by 20% is nice. The third mini boss guy, the high channeler, does the same thing as the previous two except I believe he does it about 30% faster. So it's the same storm, the same damage, the same everything. It just happens quicker. The Blazehoof boss, which is the second last boss, is also having, uh, I believe, her health reduced by 50%, along with the, the ad she spawns, the Fire Elemental, is having its health reduced by 20. Karaka and Urquhart Stormbane are also having their health reduced by 10%. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be enough. I feel like this is probably going to be one of the outlier boss fights that's just way, way harder than any other boss fight next week. There are quite a few mechanics to this, the dragon and the dragon rider boss. None of them make the fight particularly easy. This is the boss fight that requires absolutely perfect mechanics from your whole party or else you all die, effectively. I mean, that's a bit hyper hyperbolic, but the way it works is that you want to kill the dragon as soon as possible through so through phase one any damage you can do to the dragon is always the priority urquhart the guy casts a debuff on the tank that needs to be dispelled because it causes an increased amount of damage taken for every subsequent cast of that ability so if you let it stack up two or three or four times it'll one shot the tank so you dispel that and you avoid the fire on the ground. Now the way the dragon flies around and blows the fire patches on the ground around is scripted. It goes anti-clockwise and it, I believe it always starts pushing out off the platform. So in the more organized groups you want everyone to basically always be playing around the middle area of the platform and then the people who get the inferno debuff on them that causes them to then drop the fire patches on the ground should be running that debuff off to the edge 
here so that it gets pushed off the platform first by the big dragon. And then you always want to run it to the edge that's going to get pushed off next. And then in the final phase, when the dragon drops down and the rider jumps on them again, it's basically a burn phase. You want to lust, you want to use everything you have, you want all your healer cooldowns up because this is the phase that's difficult. At the moment, the most difficult part about this is that the flame spit goes on five targets and this debuff absolutely destroys parties. I don't even think this is healable. I don't. It's difficult to even say if this is a healing mechanic at the moment because it does so much damage. There isn't any healing cooldown in the game that I know of that's strong enough to heal through this. Maybe Rewind, maybe a fully buffed Revival. I, I don't know, it's it's a lot of damage in higher keys. It being reduced from five players to three is great, but this is also the kind of mechanic where unless it gets a significant damage reduction or damage nerf, this is gonna be like a, you need a personal or an immunity, as well as maybe if you don't have an immunity, you're probably looking at a personal a healer cooldown or all of the healer cooldowns, as well as a health stone or health pot and like everything basically all at once. And even if you get through all that once or maybe even twice, it's just a, it's an enraged mechanic effectively. You're going to run out of defensives and cooldowns and things very quickly. So not seeing the damage on this nerfed considerably is a little questionable, but it going from Five players to three might be, I mean, it might be enough. I guess we'll, we'll see. Temple of the Jade Serpent. Uh, this is another one that I feel like could still be a bit of an outlier. The, the nerfs here are good, but I don't, I wouldn't say they're probably going to be strong enough. So the Depraved Mistweaver's Defiling Mist damage has been reduced by 20%. This is the single target debuff, the kind of degen dot damage thing that goes out uh, on a single player towards the end of the dungeon. These depraved misweavers in the on the way to the final courtyard and in the final courtyard. This is a nice change. This does a lot of damage at the moment. And the Touch of Ruins initial aura is now a curse effect. So at the moment, the way this works is that the initial aura is applied and after a short duration, it kind of detonates. And the detonate is that a curse is applied, which is a huge healing absorb. That healing, Absorb Curse can be dispelled by Druids and Shamans. But this change means that you'll be able to, well, those two classes will now be able to dispel that effect before the detonation happens and before the damage event of that detonation happens. This is already a mechanic that feels like it isn't a big problem for the two healing specs that can dispel it and feels like a nightmare for everybody else. And this change is gonna make that, I guess, even more of the case. It's definitely nice if you can dispel it though. Wise Mari, which is the first boss, the water channeler that does the 360 spinning AOE, is having the visibility on the on that geyser incre increased and fixing a bug that meant that sometimes, I didn't experience this, but sometimes Wise Mari did the spinning mechanic, but the boss itself didn't move, so you couldn't really tell where the, where the water was. And the last boss is also receiving some nerfs, the Shah of Doubt. Touch of nothingness damage is being reduced by 20%. This is the mechanic that generates the duplicate shadow versions of the whole party that you then have to fight and kill. So that the damage on that's being reduced by 20% and the bounds of reality. So at the same time that the boss spawns all those adds, it also at the moment goes immune and that is being changed to just be a 99% damage reduction. This is great because it means that People will, like, you'll still be able to generate resources by hitting the boss. This priest will still be able to heal via atonement. Mistweavers will still be able to heal by ancient teachings. You can still generate rage and combo points and things like that by hitting the boss. So that's a nice change. I would like to have seen a couple of more changes to Temple of the Jade Serpent. It's a little annoying at the moment that these guys, the corrupting corrupt living waters have a unkickable unstoppable cast or whatever that just destroys the entire party that you pretty much have to line aside i also think this courtyard could have nerfs maybe to the ads that explode on death or the ads that spawn more ads the minions of doubt that shoot out all the little guys again or some further nerfs i, I would even have liked to have seen something like the misweavers have their touch of ruin changed to just a normal dispel rather than a curse dispel. As far as the last boss goes, this is also a bit of a healing check at the moment. The nurse 
it's received will be nice, but it nerfed like the the boss spawning the shadow images of everyone. That's a nerf to the easy part of the fight. The difficult part of that about this fight is the double debuffs going out. I'm not quite sure about the timer on this, but it feels like sometimes it's about 15 seconds and sometimes it's about 30 or something. I don't know. But effectively, you the so the boss will throw out two debuffs onto players. You have to instantly dispel one of them and then you need to heal the other debuff like a lot significantly uh in i think a 13 or something this week that debuff was ticking for 75k 70k does a lot of damage unless you're a priest in which case you can master spell it which is really nice and if you take the uh if you're a priest and you take the md improvement talent that reduces the cooldown on master spell you can master spell every single one of those by the way which is makes that boss really easy a lot of these are all changes to trash packs a couple of boss changes here and there but for the most part after a fortified week of mythic plus we get a lot of trash nerfs i'm expecting something reasonably like similar at the end of next week after our first tyrannical week something like first boss ruby life pools the size of the absorb shield that can go out the amount of incoming damage going out the, the, the party wide damage that fight is going to be a nightmare not mechanically speaking just from the raw numerical numbers that are getting pushed out numerical numbers same thing with the last boss ruby life pools like i said the the fire dot that goes out from effectively any mechanic on that boss is going to be probably need to be looked at on tyrannical same thing with even something like the health in on the worm boss in shadow moon burial grounds that fight is going to be like an eight minute fight or six minute fight or something next week in any reasonable key which is pretty crazy so yeah this is a, a good set of fortify changes i'm hoping there's going to be another good set of tyrannical changes after next week all in all, I am very happy with these this first round of changes. I'm very keen to get back into Mythic Plus next week, even though it's going to be Grievous Bursting. Temple of the Jade Serpent, I still think that's going to be a bit of an outlier. Maybe the Tree Boss as well. Maybe Algathar Tree Boss may need some more tuning. We'll see. And, uh, thanks everyone for watching and algorithm stuff.